Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, micro training video from FMCG Academy. Simply pause on the screen if you want to read through this uh, top slide. Today we're going to talk about a basic product PNL, uh, understanding common scenarios uh, that impact the PNL. And the first scenario we're going to talk about today. Uh, but just before I get to that, make sure you click on the link and go back and see the original uh, full basic FMCG product PNL video to make sure you're fully aware of the concepts we've already discovered. So the scenario we're going to talk about today is a higher list or wholesale price. Uh, the business may decide or the management team may decide that, look, we need a higher list or wholesale price to improve profitability. Uh, it's not going to work. So what impact does that have on the overall PL? That's what we're going to talk about today. So let me just jump into Excel. And uh, if you remember, this was the template we uh, discussed in the first video uh, with the description here and a list price of 40 and uh, uh, and all those numbers going down to a PL down here. Now on an adjacent sheet, what I've done is essentially replicate that whole PNL and in this shaded area from H to J I've just kept a faded sort of color there and I've just uh, put those numbers the ori those original numbers are all here um, and they've been kept frozen so that we can just compare the variance when we start making changes on some key metrics uh, especially the list of wholesale price which is the scenario uh, we're going to discuss today in this cell here we're going to look at variance so for the green cells uh, green metrics we're going to look at percentage variance uh, so how much percentage difference is 2.8 million versus 2.8 or whatever the number comes up here and similar for net sales net product contribution and sales and marketing contribution while for the cost structures we're just going to look at the change in uh, the percentage so it's simply the cell here minus that and on the extreme right, we're going to capture the dollar variance between uh, column F and column I. So the I is the current uh, PNL. So we just look at that as a dollar variance to see how the money is flowing. Um, let's jump straight into it. So we talked about the business saying, OK, look, we're not happy with $710,000. We need to make more money. So let's raise the list price to $42. Uh, so when you raise that, essentially you've raised the list price or the wholesale price by 5%. Uh, immediately, uh, your gross sales goes up. Uh, your discretionary trade spend marginally comes down as a percentage point, though in absolute numbers it is all going up. Uh, so you've got $140,000 more in gross sales. You've lost a bit of money with trade spend. Um, and you've got $103,000 uh, in terms of net sales and then that remains consistent all the way through because the costs of uh, product and advertising don't change so we assumed similar advertising costs but their percentages obviously come down that's why these sales have turned green uh, but in reality what's going to happen when you move the list price to 42 without changing anything else uh, or the recommended shelf price or the rrp uh, to the retailer, the retailer margin is going to drop to 20 and, and it's uh, from 23.8 earlier. And what is very likely is that the retailer will say, hey, look, I'm not going to work with 20. You've taken, moved your price up and you are not increasing my discounts. Uh, so I'm going to move my shelf price up by another 5% too. So the retailer jumps to $5.25 and goes back to 23.8% margin. It's a higher dollar margin, but it's of a higher shelf price. And again, what's happening here, discretionary trade spend has gone up a little bit. Profitability is still very good, 8% up versus, last, uh, versus the original numbers. Uh, let's have a look uh, why that discretionary trade spend has gone up because in the promotional price what's happening now we need to fund 83 cents scan to fund is now 83 cents in the original scenario it was 67 and the reason for that is we were trying to come down from five dollars 25 to 399 uh, we're, we're coming down from 525 to 399 while we were coming down from 5 to 399 so it's a smaller number earlier which you had to uh, fund and now it's a larger number a uh, dollar 25 we need to fund versus a uh, dollar discount by the retailer earlier so that increases the uh, uh, trade spend as a percentage discretionary trade spend uh, which uh, is gone from 22 to 25 i've kept the fixed retailer cost flat at five percent uh, so i've not altered that at all all we've done is moved everything and given them a dollar and three earlier we're giving we were giving them 87 cents <clears throat> um so promotional contribution per unit also comes down from 30 to 28 and that's uh, largely a function of that number moving up uh, but is that reality again so is uh, 
is the is is the 525 price going to just simply do that there's all likelihood that let's move to the units now so the units might actually drop so you've raised the price by five percent so let's say the units drop to nine uh, now suddenly everything starts turning red uh, and you're getting your flat on gross sales your discretionary trade spend is negative your net sales is negative your discretionary trade spend has gone up quite a bit now uh, your net product contribution is down, your profitability is down. So we are behind from where we started. So the business needs to say, oh no, this doesn't look good. If that number drops by even one unit per store per week on an average, down from 10 to nine, uh, it is a problem. However, there is a possibility that this number here, which in this case was 20 from a 10 base, so it was double, uh, does not go to 18, but actually goes further up because you're now discounting from 525 to 399 and shoppers or consumers might see that as a bigger benefit than something dropping from 5 to 399 so this might actually go up to 21 uh, and then we are back pretty much uh, uh, in positive territory with the gross sales up at 2.6 uh, percent profitability is almost flat so there's no so we've done all this and we've reached exactly pretty much where we started now if this goes to 22 this could be a better number, uh, but your discretionary trade spend is uh, rising, uh, and that, that it's also rising because uh, you know your percentage units on promotion has now gone up from 51 to 56. Uh, even when you left it at 20, it had gone up by default because your original sales number was uh, down from 10 to 9. So those are some of these uh, impacts you get when you start playing around with these numbers. So I'll leave it at 21 and see, yep, we're back where we started. So we've we've uh, changed the uh, average unit sales per store per week uh, when on off promotion and we've changed it when on promotion. We've changed the shelf price. We've changed quite a few things with the retailer and we've come back to where we were. But again, I'd encourage you to play around with this and uh, make your own template and see where you can stack up. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.